Hi guys, Mr. Polly here. So before I jump into the story for this week, I just want to remind you that you can find my videos either every Monday on your Google Classroom, those will be posted even through the Easter holidays, or you can go to my YouTube channel where you can find all of the videos I've posted. So what have we got for you this week? Let's have a look, shall we? This week we have a non-fiction book called Scientist and Stargazer Galileo. Now Galileo was a very, very famous scientist uh, and he discovered a lot to do with the planets and to do with the stars. So he's a very interesting historical person. So this book is actually a story, but it is non-fiction because this story is not a made-up story, it is the real story of his life. So remember, fiction is something, uh, a book with made-up stuff and non-fiction is a book with not made-up stuff. So this one is non-fiction. So let's have a look at in here shall we because actually not all of the information is on the front the illustrator is Jerry Ball and the author is Jacqueline Mitton now this does not have a contents page or a list of chapters it does have an index at the back where we can find some of the keywords from the book along with the pages that you can find the information on and then it's got some important dates from Galileo's life so you can see like, you know, in 1564 he's born, 1642 he dies, and then everything in between. So let's jump into the uh, story, shall we? Galileo Galilei grew up in Pisa, a town in, his, in what is now Italy. He was born in 1564, the same year that Shakespeare was born in England. His father, Vin Vincenzo, was a musician, and Galileo had a talent for music too. He learned to play the lute and the organ. This is a lute. It's kind of like an old-style guitar. And an organ is like a piano that they have, uh, usually in big churches, and it uses air to play the notes. Vincenzo always liked to try new things with his music. Galileo was like his father in many ways. He was a lively and energetic child, and he loved to explore and investigate everything around him. Vincenzo knew his son was clever, but he never dreamed he would be one of the world's greatest scientists. Galileo had his first lessons from a tutor at home. He especially enjoyed drawing, poetry and mathematics. When he was ten years old, the family moved to the nearby city of Florence. There, Galileo went to school at a monastery. But when Galileo showed interest in becoming a monk himself, his father was horrified and made him leave. So, here we have the, a word you might not know, which is monastery. Now, monasteries are like uh, big Christian or Catholic churches where people called monks live. And monks live their whole life at the monastery, and they spend their whole day uh, praying and doing other religious things for that religion. So, Galileo's dad doesn't want him to just join the church for his whole life. The Galilei family were not wealthy. Galileo would need to earn a living. Vincenzo decided his son should train to be a doctor at Pisa University, but Galileo hated it. He was sometimes mischievous and cheeky. He kept arguing with his teachers and made himself very unpopular. His nickname was the Wrangler. I believe a Wrangler is someone who uh, herds animals. Hmm. At Pisa, Galileo made an important scientific discovery when he was only 18 years old. It happened in the cathedral. The priest was giving a very boring sermon. Instead of listening, Galileo watched a great chandelier swinging on a long chain. The swings were big at first, then got smaller. But all the swings, long and short, took exactly the same time. Galileo checked the time against the regular rhythm of his pulse. He was quick to realize the importance of the new discovery. Years later, he would use it to design a pendulum clock. Galileo gave up medicine. He went back to Florence and studied mathematics. But he was not qualified to do anything, and he could not get a job. So let's have a look back at this last couple of paragraphs here, and let's make sure we understand it properly, okay? So first of all, we have, uh, so he's in the cathedral listening to the priest. So he's in like a church, like a big church. And he's watching the chandelier on the ceiling. Now a chandelier is like a big hanging light that they would have had in the old days. 
So he's noticed that as the chandelier is swinging backwards and forwards, as the swings get shorter, it still takes the same amount of time. That's really interesting, isn't it? Galileo spent the next four years studying, writing, and experimenting at home. During this time, he made friends with many influential people. He was a likable young man and had a lot of charm. Eventually, one of Galileo's friends helped him to get a post teaching mathematics at Pisa University, but it went badly from the start. The other professors were very upset when Galileo mocked them. They were old-fashioned and teaching things that were wrong, Galileo said. Sorry about that when, I was checking the time on the video. <laughs> At that time, most people accepted ideas handed down from centuries before without question. But Galileo believed it was important to do experiments to prove that the ideas were true. To make his point, Galileo did an experiment in public. In Pisa, there was a leaning tower. It is still there today. From the top of the tower, Galileo dropped two different weights. The old belief was that the heavier one would land first, but Galileo thought that they would land together. He was right. The professors, students, and people of Pisa were amazed. So this is the start of really uh, modern science, where people don't just accept ideas without thinking about them. They test them and prove them, and then share their findings with people, writing down the evidence. Galileo made many enemies at Pisa. They went to his lectures to hiss and boo. So, after three years, Galileo moved away from his hometown to the University of Padua. Today, Pisa and Padua were both in Italy. But when Galileo was alive, there was no such country as Italy. They were independent states, each with its own laws and ruler. Pisa was in Tuscany. Let's find that here and Padua was in the Venetian Republic, which is up here. So you can see back in those days, there were different states. But nowadays, of course, <clears throat> they're all the same. They're all part of Italy. In Padua, people accepted new ideas much more easily than they did in Pisa. So Galileo did very well as a professor there. He settled down and had a family. He set up a workshop to make scientific instruments. The word soon spread about the fine things he made. Orders came in from all over Europe. Galileo spent 18 years in Padua. It was the happiest period of his life. Galileo eventually grew restless, however. He wanted to live and work in a larger city and have more time for experiments. He hoped to go back to Florence, but he was not yet famous enough to get any job he chose. At the university, Galileo taught astronomy as well as math. He began questioning old beliefs about how the sun and the earth move in space. So astronomy is actually the study of the stars and the sky. Most people in Galileo's day believed the earth was the centre of the universe. They thought that the sun, the moon and the planets travelled around the earth in circles. But 20 years before Galileo was born, a man named Nicholas Copernicus had put forward a different picture. He said that the Earth and the other planets travel around the Sun and the Moon travels around the Earth. Galileo believed Copernicus was right, but not many people agreed. The leaders of the Catholic Church said Copernicus's theory went against the teachings of the Bible. In those days, the Church authorities were very powerful. People who spoke against them were often tortured or killed. It was too risky for Galileo to say in public what he really thought. When an exploding star blazed in the sky in 1604, 1604, Galileo became even more interested in astronomy. In 1609, something happened that dramatically changed Galileo's life. He heard news of an amazing discovery. Dutch opticians had found out how to make a telescope. It was simply two lenses in a tube but when you looked through it, distant objects appeared nearer. Galileo set about making telescopes of his own. He soon made several, better than any of the Dutch ones. Galileo arranged to show some of the important governors of the city in Venice what you could see 
through a telescope. They went to the top of the bell tower in St. Mark's Square in Venice. The inventors were very, sorry, the governors were very impressed by the wonderful new instrument. They could see a church in Padua 38 kilometers away and many other different things. The telescope magnified everything nine times, so everything far away would appear nine times closer. Galileo presented the telescope to the ruler of Venice, who was called the Doge. In return, he got a huge pay rise and was told he could keep his job in Padua for life. At last, Galileo was really famous. So look, here is a uh, diagram of a telescope. So it's a long tube. The light comes in through these lenses. This one is called the objective lens. And this one is called the eyepiece lens. This is where you put your eye, this is where you look at the object. And that's why they have those two names. <clears throat> Galileo's telescopes were the very best anyone could buy. Orders poured in. Making accurate lenses was very difficult in those days. And Galileo set high standards. No telescope left his workshop unless Galileo thought it was good enough. One clear light, he took his best telescope one that could magnify 30 times and turned it on the sky. What Galileo saw totally amazed him. Wherever he looked, there was something new, something you could not see by eye alone. So, I think that this video has gotten long enough already. So what we'll do is we'll come back to it next week and finish it up. So what do you think is going to happen? What do you think Galileo is going to discover? You can leave comments on the Google Classroom if you're interested or have any predictions. Or maybe if you know the story yourself, you can tell me what you think. Well guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I look forward to talking about it with you next week. Bye guys!